Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, 45 Degree Sailing, my name is Nick. Now today, we are going to do a solo docking video. Okay, I've got to bring the boat back into the marina, we've been out doing a photo shoot, and a lot of people ask us when we're out on the boat, especially if they haven't sailed before, they get quite enamored by Mahner and I doing our docking thing, and they say, well, how do you do all that on your own? Now the reality is you do have to do this on your own sometimes, so today we're just going to show you how I would have to do it when I have to dock the boat on my own. So first of all, we're out here, I'm on autopilot right now, and we're going to do setup first. So first of all, I've got to put my fenders out, get them all in position while I'm out in clear water here, um, and then get my lines ready at the back. So I've already put my fenders down the starboard side. I'm now putting the large ball fender on the stern of the boat, because I want this to protect the boat if, for any reason, I back up too close to the dock, because we're going stern too, that this will be able to just nudge on and look after the boat. <coughs> So I secure this here with a clove hitch on a bite there and then I lower this down until it is just above the water line. Come and have a look Mahina. Just above the water line so it's going to protect from the dock there. Cool. Alright, now we need to prep our lines. You're going to be coming in uh, having to do everything at once. Also while you're doing this you're taking a good look around all the time, keeping a proper lookout at all times. So we need to prep our lines ready to toss to the person on the dock. So we have these mostly set up already on the stern. So I'm going to take my lines. Now when this goes to the person on the dock, it needs to go clean from the cleat. So I've got to pass this out here and around everything so that when I throw him those lines from here, everything is clean. Now what I like to do is be very sure that there's no tangles. So I come over here. And I bring my line around and I do these figure of eights where I can see them. As you would have seen in our other docking video, when uh, Mahin and I dock the Hansa 588, you can watch that just up in the corner here. All right, so the figure of eights there are going to pull out really nicely. Now I'm going to take what I'm going to toss to the guy on the dock, which is only three or four loops, depending on how far I think I need to throw them. And those are going to get prepped and just put right there. This way I know there's no tangles and I can grab that and toss it. So we do that for both sides, making sure everything's clean. Then I'm going to finish putting on the fenders on the port side. Now I spread my fenders evenly over each side. I have them sitting up just with the top above the tow rail. That's generally a good position to have your fenders so that up, if you're up against another boat, that you're going to get the most amount of coverage with the top just above the tow rail. We secure these on with a clove hitch on a bite. We wrap around like this, whoop, cross over, pull the loop through, and then I always put an extra one on this. Some people say don't put this on just yet, um, especially if you're about to dock, because it'd be easier to change this just by going off, and then you can change the height. Because I know where I'm going in, and I know the height I want it, I'm going to put that extra one on. Now I'm going to cover all of the knots we use here, the bowline, the clove hitch on a bite, round turn and two half hitches, in another video you can watch that here. I also like to put these on the stanchions or on the rails, because it's much stronger than having them pull down on your lifelines. And then my last one, I like to have very far aft, right back here so that when I drive against my stern line, this has got the most protection for the stern of the boat when I pull in close. So that's our fenders ready, our lines are ready, now we're going to look at our approach to the marina. On the approach to the marina, I'm also going to make sure that my everything's ready here. My crew's ready, I've got no crew, this is a solo video, but there's nothing in the cockpit that's going to interrupt me. So like, I've got these lovely cushions down here for the photo shoot, that's great, but I'm going to want to step up over these. Um, if I want to get out of this side of the cockpit with the line, so I'm getting rid of that. Uh, the tables are up and there's nothing going to fall off here. I'm going to do this other side pillow as well. Um, also, preparing me, alright? I'm going to get warm doing this, so I don't need this jacket on anymore, as much as I love wearing the brand, and I didn't wear a branded t-shirt today. <laughs> I've got that sorted. Also keeping an eye still on my course. I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. I've already slowed my speed. I've got another yacht coming in here, and I'm going to let him go ahead because I've got to put the drone up for you guys to see this from the air. Um, then, double checks. Okay, what do I need ready? I need my bow thrusters and stern thrusters ready. If I've got them and I want to use them, they're turning on. Just make sure there's no switches that need to go on all of a sudden. 
I double check my lines. Yes, these are all set up. Fenders, fenders, nothing slipped off. And I always check this, make sure this is not actually caught up. Number of times I put that line out first, then tied this fender on and it's hooked under it. So just always double check. Um, now the reason I didn't explain that just before we do this, instead of having the whole line coiled to throw to the guy in the dock, depending on the system on the dock, it could be a bollard or a ring. Quite often in the marinas, like today, it's a ring. So if you throw him the whole line, he's got to then find the end, untangle what you threw him, feed it through the ring and get it back to you. What you want to do when you're docking on your own anytime is reduce the amount of time it takes to get your control line on. So by throwing him just a manageable amount of line there, he can get the end, feed it through, and the slack will run out nice and even. Cool. All right, now that we've got our approach to our marina, uh, we've checked all of our things, we're nice and clear. I was gonna say we've looked at the wind, but the wind unfortunately just died completely on us. Unfortunately, because I wanted to show you how to do that with wind, but yeah, anyway, so. Marina Bautic, Marina Bautic, this is Yacht Marie, you copy? So we call up the marina on the channel that they're designated. Here it's 17, in Croatia. And we're gonna tell them that we're returning to our pier. Yes, Marina Bautic, this is Yacht Marie with Yacht Explorer. We're returning to our berth, over. Okay, Hvala. Okay, so now we are, we're here in our approach in the marina. Now, one thing I'm teaching all the time when I teach training and skippering and all this sort of thing, with docking and maneuvering under power, because it's one of the hardest things about sailing, and that is only go as fast as you need to and use neutral as a gear. Okay, so right now I'm doing, I'm just under two knots and I'm in control. I have control because there is not that much wind in here and I don't need more than two knots to have control with my rudders. So you only go as fast as you need to to stay in control. So I can click in and out of forwards uh, to maintain that control while I'm in here. So now I'm gonna set up for my berth. Now today, actually I'll do a reverse right from out here because that is quite often how I would teach people to do it and this berth particularly, we're gonna have a larger boat on our port side and a smaller boat on our starboard side so it makes sense to reverse with that angle into the berth. So right out at the entrance to our pier, I'm gonna stop here and go into reverse. Now I've turned my bow thrusters and stern thrusters on, and I'm just testing those are working. Now the Bavaria 51 is a twin rudder boat. So that means we do not have the luxury of being able to push water straight over our rudder. So it does not react when we put it in forward straight away uh, and want to change the direction of the yachts. It's something to be aware of when you're chartering or sailing or maneuvering these boats. It makes it great under sail, absolutely great. Uh, very light on the helm, though maneuvering in the marina I find is a little harder. So now I'm gonna put myself in a position here that I like to be in when I'm reversing into a berth. In this position here, I can set myself up for my berth. I can see where I'm going here and at the bow because you use the bow and the movement on the bow to understand which way you're turning when you're in reverse. And I can reach my gear lever. One thing I'm gonna do before I jump into this berth, especially on a windy day, is check to see if I've actually got the guy on the dock ready to take my lines. And I don't, but it looks like he's on his way. So I'm gonna start this turn around now. Here's our man. Now ideally I do this without the bow thrusters or the stern thrusters, just so that I know I've got control of that. Um, I left this turn a little bit late because I was faffing around with the drone and talking and things like that. Now when we go stern to in the marina like this, uh, as you can see our man on the dock, he's pulling up the line for us. So he's going to pull up the lazy line, which extends out to our bow mooring lines. And that is what's going to hold our bow out to the water. This is why it's very hard to do this absolutely solo. Now I'm using neutral here all the time, and as you can see, we're not going fast. It's not a windy day, I do not need to go fast. Now we're done. As we approach the dock here, I want to get quite close. And now I'm using forwards just to stop us from getting back onto the dock itself. As soon as I've lost my forward, it'll reverse momentum, I stop. If you can throw the line to him like that over his arm, then it's not going to hit him in the face. 
Oh, I'll take it back. It's okay. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so you'll get this as well. Is often you will um, either get someone who's going to pass the line back to you, or he's just going to hitch it there, so that you don't have to deal with it straight away. Now, if it was a really windy day, or if I was getting blown away right now, I would drive my boat against that stern line or control line so that I had control and was not drifting closer to the dock, especially if I had a wind on the nose. Um, so we just keep pulling this out and I keep watching the stern of my boat. Now that I'm pulling the boat forward, I don't have to worry about the boat hitting backwards there and I've got that control line on so I can't go too far. So I'm not going to worry about trying to pull this really hard right now. I'm going to get it firm, get it on, and then go down and deal with my other stern line and the other bow line. Now I've gone and left my boat hook on the other side. So he hoists these up, pulls them up tight. Always have your boat hook ready and locked off in full extension. Voila. And if you've got another person here, or you, you know, this might be people that are learning to dock on their own as such, or with their crew, it's really good to give that person the um, other, other hook just to put down. Now, just have a look here. See, I've come up with a cross lazy line. Don't worry about this. Okay, just grab the other side and keep going. If you get worried about your lines, which one they're giving you, you lose the time and the boat will swing away. See why I took my jacket off. Oh, breathing now. Okay, so this will pull my bow over a bit. Again, I'm not gonna worry hugely about getting these super tight. I'm just gonna get them on and secure and I'll set the position of the boat later. Now you'll know if you've sailed with us or watched these videos before, we do O-X-O-O -O on these. We do not do hitches, they're very hard to undo. Yep. Voila. So as you see here, he got that ready to slip, got it back down to me. I can then run my lines through my fair lead and onto my cleat. Again, not bothering about doing them super tight right now, just in control. Voila. Okay, voila. Oh. All right. So at this point, well actually before this point, you're now in control. Okay, you've got, you've got two bow lines on, you've got two stern lines on, and we are well away from the dock right here. Easy. Okay, so this is the part where you just slow down and you go, all right, we're good. He's finished his job, he's off on his bike, um, and you don't have to rush about anything. If you're doing a stack on a dock, like at a Luchka Uprava or a, um, a Reaver or a Town Wharf, you may have another boat coming in next to you straight away. Better to get to this point and worry about that next boat coming in than to think about your lines right now. Anyway, now that we're sit here and we're good, we're gonna reverse against our bow lines, which are set pretty well, because we're still two and a half meters from the dock and see if they're tight enough. In order to do that, I'm gonna to want to know that the swim platform can be down and I don't get too close to the dock. So I remove the stern fender and drop the swim platform. Another amazing feature of these Bavaria cruisers, this is a Bavaria 51 cruiser with Yacht Explorer. Um, the swim platform is just massive. It's so lovely. And one thing I like about it is that it sits quite above, far above the water. So you can have it down even when you're just cruising along. So I've got quite a bit of distance there. I'm now gonna go into a stern and try this in reverse. Now, before I do any major moves in reverse, I am checking that no other lines have fallen down, there's nothing floating around in the marina and that the lazy lines that he pulled up for us are all clear. Looks all good. Just engage slowly first. You don't need to do anything really hard or fast on the boats. It's all about slow and control. And 
and I'll watch that my fenders are in good position as I drift over here. Now that's getting us quite close. Now at the moment I'm doing one and a half thousand reps. Okay, so I'm really testing it out. I'm gonna go to 2,000. Now I'm not gonna hit that dock. That 2,000 revs is like 25 knots off the bow. And that's even more. Now I'm starting to stretch closer, but not too close. That's, that's nice. If you're really worried about a storm coming, you might do it a bit. You might go and pull those lines out a bit further. Now this is that moment that if I was too close, I'm not into working too hard. So if I need to pull the boat out further, I'm gonna drive, and I'll do this as an example right now, I'm gonna go into forwards, and I'm gonna drive against my two stern lines. It's gonna bounce a little there because we were stretched. I'm gonna drive against these lines. Then I will ease these lines out to get the boat significantly further out, maybe another meter and a half out from the dock so that I can pull the bow lines up easily without having to hurt my back or strain too hard. That's how I would do that. Because we're in the right position, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go back to reverse, reverse, to that level and then tighten my stern lines. I don't want to be ridiculously tight, so I'm going to do about the 2000. Just wait for that to settle. Always watching out for my fenders, but they are in good positions. Now I actually got a comment on, um, on the docking stern 2 video that we do on the 588 in this, that Mahina and I do, and he said, He's like watching, hey, do you transfer these lines back? They're set to slip. Now what we do here when we lock these off is O, 8, O, and see how it cinches underneath, and then another O. Now that is going nowhere, all right? That is how I leave my lines. <laughs> That's how I leave my lines. So I don't need to do hitches over here. Hitches are just hard to undo in an emergency. Now we'll set the other line. Okay, and I can lean on these, but I don't want to work too hard again. I just want the boat to settle in the right place. O, eight, O, O. Now, I do the same thing on the bow with the mooring lines. Now, if you're skipper or if you're teaching, say, do hitches, that's what you want to do, do hitches. This is how we do it. All right, so we release our gear. We're no longer reversing against our bow lines. The tension, the spring that we had in the bow lines has now let off and we're settling back in position. And we're close enough to step off and get our plank, which isn't always necessary, um, but also a safe, happy distance for spending the night on the boat. Look, I hope that was really helpful. Um, I'll stand over here because the light's a bit muppety. I hope that was really helpful. Um, as I said, my name's Nick, 45 Degrees Sailing. Ugh, got a bit sweaty doing that. Um, remember, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these. Um, I'd love you to like the video and leave a comment if this was helpful or if you've got questions about how I did it. Um, obviously, there wasn't any wind today, so it was relatively easy. But the process is the same if you have the wind. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Here's a little uh, trick. If anyone's ever caught a Mavic, this is how I do it. I come in sideways because the obstacle avoidance um, can be a bit tricky, then you just flip it over. There she is.